Toho fans are a strange bunch. Imagine liking a series about girls that are yokai. But surprisingly, this series has existed for 25 years at this point, and with the series existing for this long, there are bound to be a plentiful amount of characters. When you enter the Toho community, you will see people having a favorite character, and with those come stereotypes. So let's see what they entail. Reimu fans are basic, like Starbucks, vanilla ice cream, white car, you know, basic. Reimu fans are usually more experienced people who just want things to be simple. They habitually enjoy art, they play the games every so often, and they likely have successful lives outside of Taha. If you ever meet these people, be thankful, because they are good influences on your life and bring you good fortune. Marisa fans are basic, but with a twist. Think of people who enjoy vanilla ice cream, but with sprinkles. Marisa is known for being a bolder and brasher character than Reimu, so these people are attracted to her for being a more exciting and cooler character. They think that the Master Spark is the coolest and strongest attack, even though it can't even kill a boss on one strike. They also continue to laugh at the Marisa butt joke because ha ha ha, it's still funny, ha 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 ha. But then again, Marisa fans can be really talented and create nice art for whatever reason. So these people are kind of a mixed bag. This is likely one of the first Toho characters you knew existed. Due to a plethora of memes, remixes, and overall childish character, and don't forget Fumos, she resonates with a lot of people and is likely one of your first favorite characters. Besides from recently new fans, experienced Cerno fans are likely to be... Meme Makers. Seriously, ask a meme maker in the Tall community who their favorite fairy is, and it's likely going to be Cerno. These people probably own a Tall ship post channel, they post on a Tall subreddit every once in a while and get some reddit gold, and probably hoard Cerno Fumos. Sometimes they could be a bit annoying with their memes, but overall, they're chill people. Unless you're Osaka who doesn't know how to Baka, shut up about Baka, Cerno. Baka, 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 Baka. These people own body pillows. Patchouli fans are an oddity, they are usually dinguses that stay in their parents' basement downloading R18 art of Patchouli on their PCs. They likely live their days being gacha game whales, basically people who spend way too much money on gacha games. They are surprisingly active on Discord servers as role players, but they are not moderators, and overall, they are not TOO problematic people. Sakuya fans think that her ability of time stop is the greatest thing to have ever been created, even though it was literally stolen from Dio Brando. Her character of being a time stopping maid that throws knives who for whatever reason serves a vampire is intriguing to many. You see these as more beginner members of the community who think that her fight is the hardest in the series and are likely fans of Jojo, so stereotypes from that community carry over to Sakuya, or they are just fans of the Night and Nights remix. These people, <laughs> these people are amazing. They are very talented in their craft, whether it be drawing, game creation, or cosplay. Romilia Scarlet is known for being a calm, collected, and eloquent character. Maybe a little childish, but they are very mature people, surprisingly, so I suppose that's nice. Romilia fans are likely to be your best bro once you meet them, so yay. The other first tall character you got introduced to. Thanks to you and Owen Wuzzer and the Plodori remixes, she is one of the most popular characters in the entire community, even though she doesn't have much lore behind her. People who enjoy Flandra are either very new fans or people that enjoy classic tall era and culture. They are known to be a bit elitist and think that the Flandra's fight and song is the greatest piece of art known to man, but despite that, they appreciate the old era and respect it for what it is. They may see Embodiment of Scarlet Devils better than it actually is, but still cool people. When you mix a Flandra fan and a Romilia fan, that's like mixing Oreo and milk. You're gonna get a cool combo to say the least. These people are very childish, like Rumia herself. They likely hate that Rumia is forgotten in the grand scheme of things, despite her being the first boss of Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. When you see one in the wild, please give them support. You have no idea how much Rumia fans are suffering. These people respect the forgotten and nameless. They usually are fans who are deep into the lore of the series and enjoy making fanfiction and art of the forgotten. Dial San and Kuma fans are the biggest perpetrators of this respect cult, but if someone's favorite is an obscure PC98 character, then they fit this criteria too. They likely only play the old Windows and PC98 games since they see the newer Tall games as too different from the classic era, and maybe a little superior. Letty fans have the same dilemma as Rumia fans. They themselves are forgotten and hate that Letty is a forgotten character. To add salt to the wound, Letty is a very strong character that most people in the community just forget about. So they are a little angry that Letty is not as cool as Junko. But on a more positive note, these people love the snow and cold and would die to live on northern Finland if given a chance. 
and they also believe that they are superior to Cernal fans. These people love cats. They completely ignore Can and Chen's character and assume that Chen is just a cute cat that just loves to roll around on the ground and like maybe claw the couch every once in a while. As a certified cat lover myself, I have a bit of a soft spot for Chen. These people get overshadowed by Ron and Yukari fans, but they likely own cats and probably only follow cat accounts on Instagram to make up for that fact. The average Alice fan is a shipper. No matter where they go, they can't go anywhere in the community without shipping characters because they must ship a character. Alice and Marisa? Oh, absolute classic. Alice and Patchouli? Okay, very respectable, kind of nice. Alex and... Ew! 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 Eh! Aside from shippers, these people are likely cosplayers. Alice has a cool design that resonates with Lulita and crafting cosplayers, which, if you're in that community, yay, I suppose. I'm going to group the Prism Rivers together since they share a lot of traits. Fans of the Prism River sisters enjoy and make music. They likely own a huge vinyl and CD collection and have a pretty sick record setup. If they create music, they own a MIDI piano, likely own a small tall remix channel on YouTube and SoundCloud, and create some nice hits that people never hear. Between the sisters themselves, Merlin fans are pretty crazy people. They say that Merlin is the best Prism River of all freaking time, without any evidence really. Lunasa fans are more mature and serious and enjoy the simple parts of life and music. Lyrica fans are cheerful, but more in reality than Merlin fans. Oh, and we can't forget about Layla. Layla fans hate how she never got her own design, and probably have a plot to bribe Zun and add her to the next tall game one day. In rare cases, Prison River fans get salty that Ghostly Assemble's not the most popular song in Tall Hall, and long for the days that it returns to the top 10. Someday. Someday your wish will come true. These people are likely newer fans that came into the community in 2019 after the release of Wily Beast and Weakest Creature and Toho Lost Word. Newer Yomu stands likely enjoy Yomu because of how she plays in Wily Beast and Weakest Creature, and her multitude of alternate designs in Lost Word just make them awe and amusement. However, her old school fans enjoy her fight in Perfect Cherry Blossom. Her patterns are the things that make the older fans awe and amusement. They love her design due to how simple it is. A green dress with white hair and two cute swords. There are a lot of Yomu fans, so it's hard to generalize them, but one thing that unites them together? Hiro Adi shoots a strange bird at Zun's peak song, and nothing has surpassed it since, according to them. Cosplayers These people love Yuiko's design because it has a pastel palette that, for whatever reason, attracts cosplayers and costume designers, like flies. Yuiko has a delicate design that can be expanded to make some truly beautiful cosplays. Those fans are mature and eloquent, like the Ghost Lady herself. However, the other types of Yuiko fans only know her for one thing. These dingus idiots enjoy food ASMR and likely to watch Nikito Avocado unironically in extreme cases. Their meme humor has likely never left 2011, so they are stuck in a path which can be a blessing or a curse depending on your view. But like Yelmu, one thing unites them all together, Resurrection Butterfly. Yelmu and Yuigo fans likely argue on which song is better, but <laughs> come on, let's be real, we all know that Resurrection Butterfly is better. Ron fans are furries. A typical Yukari fan is strong and very mature. They likely have been tall fans since the late 2000s and know the community inside and out and have a knowledge that spans across time. Think of anything late 2000s and this fan has experienced it. Habitual DeviantArt user, fanfiction.net writer, nostalgic YouTube watcher, Yukari fans have experienced it all. Despite the past being gone, they likely are a current user of the Toho Wiki, documenting the past for future generations. When they are not documenting history on the Wiki, they are likely being online therapists to the younger generations and being a good friend overall. Of course, there are some Yukari fans that are a bit cheeky and childish, but they are not too common. Yukari fans are not too common common overall, but cherish the ones you find. It's like finding a wise old man on a mountain in an anime that progressed the plot for the main character. It, it really do be like that. Books, books, and more books! These people have read the Forbidden Scrollery and believe it to be the greatest Toho manga ever created. Kozuzu fans are optimistic and have happy lives. You know those people on Instagram that have that aesthetic? They likely have a large library of books that only nerds love reading. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, maybe a few history books that for whatever reason they stole from school, they probably own it. They likely think the library is their meditation room and go there to cool off after a hard day of their AP and honors classes. They are likely going to be successful members of society, even if they're not the biggest tall fans. Historians 
Aku fans share a bit between Kozuzu and Yukari fans. They are likely historians that enjoy reading the history of their interests, whether it be stuff they learn in class or in history of freaking fumos for goodness sake. Aku fans probably know it all. They likely watch the lost media channels like Blame It on Jorge, El Supersonic Q, and Sakura Stardust. Finding and documenting the obscure is an Aku fan's favorite pastime. They are pretty mature considering that Aku in universe is... Oh... Oh, oh no. These people are very rare to find, likely due to them searching for lost media or reading books with their Kazuzu fan friend or something like that. And if you're probably an Aki fan, you probably have read the Forbidden Scroll, which isn't exactly that well known to newer fans. This was a shorter video, but I wanted to try the stereotypes thing again. I wanted this video to be a test to see how you will react to this. So if you like it, then tell me what stereotypes of tall fans you think I should do next in a potential part two that will likely come out a month later. <laughs> <sighs> However, I have one more stereotype before I leave. My brothers and sisters that have subscribed to me are absolutely beautiful and deserve my respect. And have a nice day and night wherever you are from.